Okay, welcome back, day four. All right, now we're gonna get at the point where most people start the process. That's nutrition, supplementation, and exercise. Not even supplementation, most people. So let's say nutrition and exercise, most people out there. But I'm gonna include all three. So nutrition, this is not a keto diet. This is not a low calorie diet. The worst thing you can do is be on a low calorie diet because it's gonna end up lowering your testosterone levels, messing up your thyroid, throwing your ecosystem off. It's great in the short run, but it's not a long-term solution or fix to this. All right, let me try to make this, break it down so it makes complete sense. You want balanced nutrition, something you can live with the rest of your life. Nothing goofy where you can't eat carbs, you can't take it any longer, and then you start eating carbs and you blow up. We want balance, okay? We want plenty of protein for healing and repairing. That's what protein does. It heals, it repairs muscle tissue. Carbohydrates are for energy. You need carbohydrates. Fats are for your skin and your joints and your health and your blood vessels. Good fats. All right, so we have an equal balance. Not protein here and carbs way up here and fat here. We do like kind of protein and carbs around here and fats like here. Okay. So keto, I really don't want to go into this, but yeah, it works. It's great in the short term. But... I'm going to get results with people by the way I'm telling you to do it just as fast or better and you're going to look healthier and feel a lot better. And I don't want you consuming all those bad fats anyways. The reason they put the carbs low and the fats high is because fats are a secondary fuel source. Carbs are a primary fuel source. But when you eat carbs and digest it, you heard of insulin. The pancreas recognizes that there's blood sugar Carbs are sugars, some release faster than others. It goes into the bloodstream, your pancreas sends out insulin. Picture them as like little buses that go pick up the sugar and then funnel it in or take it over into the muscle cell for energy. That's what the carbs are for. But the problem is if you eat too many carbs, your muscle cell can only hold so much of that sugar. The rest gets deposited as fat. So the bus takes it over to the fat. When you eat fats, you don't get an insulin surge. So there's no blood sugar in the, the system, in the blood vessels floating around. So your pancreas does not secrete insulin. So the opposite thing happens. There's a thing called glucagon. That goes over to your fat cell and it's like a key and it unlocks your fat cell takes that and converts it to glucose, sugar, puts it in your bloodstream for energy. There's the secondary fuel source. All right, so it works. All it is is Atkins. It's, it's been around the fourth, fifth time in my lifetime anyways, but it's like, just another name for it. If you eat the right amount of carbs, you're not gonna have that spillage and that thing happen. And you're gonna support muscle, feel a lot better, Trust the process. Anyways, that's nutrition. Frequency of meals. It's not one or two meals or three meals a day. And how many people do you hear, I only eat one meal a day and they're gaining weight? Your body is very smart. See, there's a lot of science here. It's built into fence mechanism is to not let you starve to death. So when you don't eat food, it doesn't think you're getting any anytime soon. So when the next food, available food that does come in, it takes some of that food, shuttles it, this is called nutrient partitioning, shuttles it into your muscle cell and uses it for energy. And then it's gonna shuttle some of it to your fat cell just in case you're not getting food for a long period of time. It's got stored energy over here. So what we wanna do is food comes in, that mechanism never comes on and it shuttles everything to your muscle cell which is your furnace. Your furnace lights up, your muscle comes down to your body. Not big and bulky, whatever age you are. Let's say you're 50. Let's say you're my age, 56. Since mid 20s, you've been losing muscle. Don't worry about getting big. You're just gonna restore some of the shit you lost, which is muscle is your metabolism. You become more efficient in eating calories. I mean, uh, processing calories. So I'm not gonna elaborate too much on nutrition. It's just like, it is basic and simple. 
and you have to develop habits because you've been programmed to eat the fast food stuff because of convenience and it's killing you. If you don't believe me, watch, I think it's the movie uh, called What the Health. Watch that. Okay, let's go into supplementation. Supplements, delivery matters. How does it get delivered into the system? I don't do pills. I don't recommend pills to my people. Pills have binders and fillers and it competes with stomach acid. It takes a long period of time to digest them. So you might, on the top end of things, on a good pill, multivitamin, get maybe 40% absorption. When I talk about delivery, I'm talking about a form in a powdered form next to the water. It's taken first thing in the morning. So it doesn't compete with food. It doesn't have binders and fillers. It gets dumped into the small intestine and gets absorbed in five or 10 minutes at a 95% absorption rate. That's what you want. Your micronutrients are your vitamins and minerals. Your macronutrients are your carbs, fats, and proteins. We got to pay attention to both, but we don't always get the micronutrients from the food, even though technically we're supposed to. The food has been processed, transported, heated, cooked, frozen. We don't know if it's in there. So the insurance policy, take your vitamins and minerals because we want all metabolic processes start with those micronutrients. Okay, so quality is extremely important. Don't rush off into the shot on the shelf and buy what's out there because there's horror stories. The industry is not regulated. You're going to get screwed most of the time. So anyways, we can, you can contact me, whatever, to find out what those sources are. So supplementation completes the nutrition. Let's go training. Training to me is there's no trick in the exercise. You see all these programs on TV, the latest, the greatest. I just, I can't stand watching them. They're gimmicks. They don't tell you they've got a nutrition program to go along with it. You just ate the nutrition program. You don't have to do that stupid ass exercise piece of equipment, whatever. We got to keep it simple. We want weight training and we want cardiovascular. We want good health. Cardiovascular, number one thing it does is strengthens the heart. Running, walking, jogging, stairmaster, elliptical, whatever. Sex, if you can do it long enough. Champ. Okay, anyways. We want either combine them both in one workout, weights and cardio, or we can separate them. Depends. If you got a busy schedule, we're going to keep it like this. You want to do the least amount of exercise to get the most out of it. I don't want you in the gym for two hours. I'm not in the gym for two hours. Why would you be? My goals are different than yours. Weight training stimulates the muscle. The muscle is the metabolism. If we keep muscle on your body, you're anti-aging. But we can't anti-age if we don't have the hormones balanced and the cortisol and the sleep and all that, and the mindset, all that shit first. See how this is coming together? Weight training, you break down the muscle when you put enough force on it. You don't have to use heavy, heavy weights, but you have to use a weight that will cause a change to occur. Lifting light weights for lots of repetitions is absolutely does nothing for you. You're not going to burn fat because it's an aerobic exercise. Anaerobic, not aerobic. The difference real quick, aerobic means with oxygen, anaerobic means without oxygen. You need oxygen present to burn and mobilize fat. That's the second thing that cardio does is burns fat. Weight training does not burn fat. When we eat to repair the muscle we broke down, it repairs back up better and stronger because you thinks you're going to put a force on it again so it prepares itself. But it can't without the nutritional support. Therefore, I call it supportive nutrition. You have to support. You eat for a reason. Yes, you can enjoy your food and socialize and all that shit, but you got to know what foods are made up and the power they have and what the damage they can do to your body and some of the good things they can do to your body. You got to know when and how to mess around with food if you're going to do it because it's dangerous, especially over at our age. All right, so weight training, cardio, we keep it simple. You can do it in an infinite number of ways. Just because I say do it this way is not always necessarily right. This guy says it this way. This girl says it this way. Everybody thinks there's a guru. The guru who's who, who can put all this shit together and get results of people, that's a guru, not somebody can show you some freaking exercises. 
That's not a trainer. That's a trained monkey. That's all that is. And I'm not making fun of anybody. It's just that this is serious stuff is why we're even talking. So this was a little bit longer because I'm passionate about this because the proof's in the pudding. It's not in your, the, the trick is not your nutrition, the latest, greatest, trendiest thing, latest, greatest, trendiest thing with exercise. No, it's the combination of everything I'm teaching you. So anyways, that's step number four. We finally got to nutrition and exercise. My goodness, when are you getting around to that? I finally got there. But I'm not bullshitting. It's not the trick. All right. Next video. We got this. You're almost there, buddy.